Uh oh, I got a little (laughs) problem. Uh oh, I got. Wait, where are we? Wait, let's wait. Can we take it from? uh, It's how does? What is the first verse? What a day to be walking in Nevada. What key are you in, Danny? Uh, I guess uh, G. Oh, I think everything's supposed to be E minor tonight. E minor. Right. He, Never mind. Well, do, can we do this next week? When I'm we're... not gonna. I'm not gonna make a music joke about that. About E minor and G. Is it the relative? It's the relative. No, major? no, 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 no. That's nerdy. Don't say that. We're a nerdy band. I don't even know what that Are means. We? Like just because nobody does. I mean, just it doesn't mean you're in the same key. Was your mind was your mind blown when I said that that song was modal? Uh, no. Just, okay. just say yes. What I mean, song yes. is modal? <laughs> I mean, technically, even major and minor are modes, right? No, no, not exactly. I, I, I disagree. No, 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 no. Oh yeah. I mean, do you want to get into this? We could get into this. Let's do. Maybe it. Wait, I'll John, defer to your topic? wisdom. Is it, is it talking about this shit? Is that you? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> All right. Um, is everybody hey, do you recording? Have a, do you have a job, John? So a mode is just a collection of notes. Oh God! Like this. But a key is like a collection of notes with a bunch of rules attached to them. Oh, that's I see. What that's basically the difference. A collection of notes like this. Yeah. So, um, so if you're playing a song, you're playing in a key, and then if you fuck up, you're playing in a mode. <laughs> is that basically? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Oh, oh, wait. Right. So what are the topics or segments? Is um, I'm calling them topics. All right. Shall I? Uh, uh, shall we get started? Yeah, you're just gonna have to talk over them. That's fine. All right. Um, just start it. Just start it. All right. Uh, you're listening this to Bear Friend Tea starts. Party, a podcast featuring members of noise pop supergroup The Flowers of Disgust. My name is Christopher Winter, and I'm joined on the podcast as always. By lascivious choir master D. Gunnard Beamish. I can't deny it. Lascivious street performer Jeremy Mullis of North Carolina. Hi. And lascivious forklift operator Dr. Jonathan Bumpers. This is not me talking. You were getting pretty lazy this week, huh? Uh, yes. Wait. You know, I actually I wrote them down, though, so that was, I mean, that's a step up from last week, last time. So, Jeremy, what's on the Last program week, tonight? Nothing. Last fortnight, you mean? Last fortnight. Uh, if you were doing these every week, you would be able to stop right now for like a month. This week on Bear Friend Tea Party, we have four segments. Segment one is What Are Our Spirit Animals? Segment two is Judge John Gibson. Segment three is Hilarious Visual Gags. And segment four is Hay versus Straw. Okay, so uh, what's first? Uh, I don't know. Jeremy knows. I Segment think. one is what our what are our spirit animals, and that topic Wait. is led by uh, Jonathan Bumpers. Uh, let's see, giraffe, uh, gecko, <laughs> um, ocelot, and uh, a tuba. Oh. All right, I guess we're finished. All right. So Man, moving that last on, one wasn't even an animal. Uh, segment two <laughs> is uh, Judge John. Are you guys Gibson. even paying attention? No, huh? it was. They, I mean, those seemed right on. Can, could you clarify who was who? No, I did he not. Was, he was pointing to the squares. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my hilarious visual gag. Oh, this is going to be a short episode. Yet. 
I thought we'd get a lot of a lot of uh, mileage out of what are our spirit animals. Well, I mean, okay, so you're not. So technically, I don't think if you actually do have a spirit animal, you're not supposed to tell anyone. Is that true? That is true because it will offend your spirit animal. Wait, th- if that is the case, then why is it that I know our mother's spirit animal? I have discussed this with our mother. Because it's, it's the horny toad, right? No, I know. That she seems tells like the everyone. kind of taboo that your mother would just, like, you know, blow out of the water. You know... Steamroll over is a better metaphor. I mean, technically, so... technically, I don't believe that our mother actually ever went on a vision quest either. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. You can't prove she didn't. Well, I mean, she she's told me the story of how she became uh, certain that her spirit animal was the horny toad, and it didn't involve a vision quest. How, didn't involve a what now? A vision quest. How, how did she so, get the horny toad as a spirit animal? She was at summer camp, and uh, she saw this horny toad, and she was like, that's my spirit guide. Really? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, she could maybe flesh out some details there, but I don't think at her summer camp they were, like, fasting for days and then taking peyote while on a vision quest um, in the wilderness. I don't know. I mean, they often, they often back in the day, um, had, you know, they'd go on kind of a Native American kick, and, I mean, in retrospect, it's sort of offensive, but... Um, I could see that happening. Well, she didn't mention it. If the, if so, in any case, if that was a real spirit animal, she offended it. Yeah, I can't hear anything you're name. saying. I, I can only hear the bass guitar. John, stop it. Yeah, John. Sorry, guys. So, is there a, what? What is the difference between a spirit animal and an anima? Anime. I'm not sure Isn't, what an anima is. I think it's a spirit animal, but I, I don't know if it, if there's a clear difference between the two. Somebody want to look this up? I thought that was just a Tool album. <sighs> are, you, are you talking about um, how not the like a, like not a the, practitioner no, no, no. of the dark arts has a you know an animal companion? I like think a, f- so. a, a familiar? familiar, a familiar. It was Thank in familiar. You. A familiar. It was in some movie. Uh, some movie I saw had a. Maybe it was one of those like movies, like by uh, some Japanese guy. Mm. Howl's Moving Castle, maybe. Oh, that guy oh. Miyazaki. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there was. I saw one of those. It sounds like it could be some kind of weird Asian thing. I I don't know. I, you know what would make a great uh, animal familiar for a sorcerer? A capybara. What's that? It's it's the world's largest rodent. Ooh. They're re- it's a huge South American... Like, it's bigger than a dog. And they live in swamps <laughs> in South America. And they're adorable. Swamps. You can see them at the Kansas City Zoo and also on YouTube, uh, swimming in swimming pools. Really? And like, they swim too? Yeah, yeah, they like to swim. They live in, you know, they live in sort of swampy areas. They, they so like to swim. A, it's a giant rat. It's an enormous, it looks more like kind of a giant hamster, I guess. It kind of sounds made up. It does, doesn't it? But they're real. No, yeah, no, I mean, it sounds so a lot like chupacabra. Animals. No, no, a lot of times you think something's made up and then you're like, hey, there's actually like 700,000 yeah. of this kind of animal. <laughs> a lot of times it's a rodent. That is like, exactly have you guys heard of how nutrias? many capybaras there are. No, I don't mean like individual. I mean like there are like seven thousand species oh, similar to that album. It's uh, that, true. Uh, that it's a- true. You thought was made. No, I thought I thought insects were bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> is that your topic? And then it. No. Jeremy, you think everything is bullshit? It. No, that's not true. He really likes uh, um, Lyle Lovett. I don't know. Uh, Lyle Lovett's okay, but he's kind of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this could go. On. I mean, what isn't? This is a good topic for you, Jeremy. What isn't bullshit? No, I mean you can't. You have to choose your topic. In it, number one, like <laughs> we're in the middle of John's topic. 
which John didn't even choose. If you want to make that your topic, you can choose okay. it next week. Jonathan did this funny thing at the beginning of the segment where he just listed all of four spirit animals, one of which was an orchestra instrument. <laughs> and, oh, what the... And that was no, the, no, 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 no. An, an ocelot's uh, an animal. A big band. Orchestra and band. It's not just an orchestra instrument. Well, I was... I was... Yeah, so, I mean, a tuba could on. be a solo instrument. That's I was true. listening to solo tuba music earlier today. There you go. Danny, Roger we were all Bolo. listening to solo tuba music earlier today. It's no you, claim I don't re- remember you being there. <laughs> <laughs> were you guys so, listening to live solo tuba music or recordings thereof? Uh, well, the album in question is a combination of studio material and live performances. But it wasn't in but person. I wasn't. No, it wasn't happening in front of That's me. It's too bad. Hey, it was still still great, you know. I'll buy so, that. So, who wants to... I mean, Jonathan did this thing where he told us all what our spirit animals were. I've already forgotten. Me too. I, uh, I only remember Ocelot and Tuba. Yeah. What were the other two, John? Yeah. Uh, giraffe was the first one. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, the second I, one was... I don't remember the second one. We'll have to wait till the podcast comes was out. It that, <laughs> was it that giant rat you were talking about earlier? Capybara? <laughs> Chupacabra? If only... Okay, those are that's what we've got to choose wait, from. Like, can your spirit animal be a, a fictional animal? This is what, what this is what you've got to choose from. We each get one. Can, Ocelot. Wait, do we each tuba? Do we each choose giraffe and chupacabra? And Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I was going to say Jeremy. Can, can, okay, can, chupacabra can you be my and animal? or Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Kevin Spacey like Circa 1989, or you take what circa... you get. <laughs> <laughs> and what do I get? You'll have to see what Kevin Spacey, what era of Kevin Spacey finds you when you go on your vision quest. <laughs> Are we? Wait, can we? How much time left in this segment? Do we, we have time we don't to go on a vision quest anymore. before this? Yeah, we we have we have removed the time limits. It's a vision quest. You can't time that shit. The vision quest we takes should, several days. We should do the vision quest during the hilarious visual gag segment. <laughs> I asked Christine Can what put- my spirit animal was, and first she said, hang on, let me try and think of what the saddest animal is. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, penguin. Oh, that's not the saddest animal. No, I don't think so either. But, you know, I, I can live with penguin. Penguin. I don't know. You don't look. At, I guess you do look kind of silly it's, when you walk. I, I, you may be, you may be misunderstanding the concept of spirit animal. <laughs> it's not the animal that you most resemble physically. It's like it's like a costume that you buy, right? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's like something you'd wear to a yeah. birthday party. If you want your, your spirit kids. animal to be horse, you have to find another person <laughs> to share that spirit animal with you. <laughs> See, this is uh, this is great. Uh I don't know, a little slow tonight, huh? I Yeah, well, that's me anyway, apparently. Penguin Penguin, uh, why do you think, I don't know. I wouldn't have gone for Penguin at all, but I have to trust her judgment because she's been married to me for ten years, and I'm not very (laughs) self-aware. Ten years, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, ten and a half. Wait, wait, what what is the ten-year anniversary? Is it like wood or something? It's the the Arkansas (laughs) anniversary. That's not true. Well, we went to Arkansas for our tenth anniversary. Give her the state of Arkansas. We did. We went to. We went on vacation to Arkansas to celebrate our tenth anniversary. Oh, did you? Did you visit? It was pretty sweet. Uh, really, it's more like you lent uh, her Arkansas. Did you visit? Um, if you're going to say Arkansas, the answer is the yes. Ar- the Arkansas State Line. <laughs> Uh, the Arkansas State Capitol? No, we did um, not go to Little Rock. Little Rock is like a 15th the... anniversary thing. We went... Do, do you want me to just tell you where we went? 
Did you see the Arkansas Dodgers play? No. We went to Did we you, went to You just looked that up, right? The name of <laughs> anything? We went no. How about the Arkansas Wolverines? We went to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, which turns out to be a totally awesome place to visit. Like I I was very skeptical about going to Arkansas for any reason, let alone a 10th anniversary. But Eureka Springs is really sweet. Uh, they should sponsor us. Who's I? Oh yeah. Oh, they... who's I? Does anybody have a prepared pitch? That's usually you. Or, uh... Yeah, that's your segment. Yeah, that's. We oh, have gonna do an. If you're gonna do an ad, I'm gonna run to it the. It was kitchen. me that one time. Where's everybody going? Hey, where's everybody going? Come back here. Left. Come back here. We're trying to podcast. Where, there goes my spirit animal. Wait, J- is Jeremy your spirit animal? <laughs> yeah, I made that joke earlier. Oh, did you? I wasn't listening. Uh, that kind of makes sense, though. I can see that. I can see Jeremy being your spirit animal. Like, guiding you through the... Yeah, I can see that. What was... Do you remember when... Fuck spirit animals. Didn't, like, a long time ago, been, when we made movies instead of music, mm-hmm. we assigned roles to one another? I think... Jeremy was the Jeremy was the Casanova I think. I think that was when we were just starting as a band I might be wrong uh, I was the intellectual Jeremy was y- yeah you, Jeremy was the sleaze no, you I were was the, the sleazy ball. one Jeremy was yeah. the ladies man and John right. was uh, I think there was some dispute the helpful animal yeah he, I think we wanted <laughs> him to be the boss and he wanted to be the helping animal <laughs> and I still feel that role today See, we need to re- release like a real album on a real record label so we can have that in the liner notes. A uh, a real record label, like <laughs> you want, like you know, um, like you want us to make up a new one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean one that will print more than like one copy. <laughs> oh, like Backdo Records. Right. <laughs> oh my god, did you guys know, speaking of you jerks in Kansas City that didn't go to the Bonton Soul Accordion Band's reunion You don't know show? I didn't go. I, do I didn't go. That. Oh, were you there? I did listen to the Bonton Soul Accordion Band today. Yeah, baby. They I played did. another show at, uh, what is that club that's sort of like across the street from where Chubby's used to be? The Carriage Club? Across the street, f- oh, the Uptown? Probably, yeah. They played there, and it was like there was like a line around the block. That one, and apparently, it was so successful that they're going to do another one, and they're they're going to make a new album. Really? Yeah. And I feel personally responsible. <laughs> yeah, because you talked me and Jeremy into going. We wouldn't have gone yeah, you if you re- hadn't told us to. You really talked it up. No, I mean, I just like happened to get into them really like a like a year or two ago, and then suddenly they reunite. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Oh, I didn't know they had broken up. Yeah, they hadn't played a show since like I don't know the the Dirt Muffin release party. <laughs> Was that in the eighties? Ninety. I don't know. Was quite a party. No. A Dirt a Muffin. Ago, oh yeah. yeah. A Dirt Muffin. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> do, do we have to pay for that song now? <laughs> yes. Huh? Oh, oh, uh, no, no, no quick, it um, discuss it so that it's fair use. Oh, what Analyze what it is or that song? It's called Dirt Muffin. Okay, it's the title track of their... Okay. I'd call that fair use. Segment two. Oh, <laughs> sin- since we're just fucking around, I was going to let you know, we're getting a house. Oh, you got it? Yeah, we well, we haven't closed yet, but uh, they got the woman who wanted to sell it to us actually owns it now. And so we're going to close next Thursday. <laughs> that's cool. So, so she's, that's only awesome. gonna, she's only going to own it for like a week. Mm-hmm. Congratulations on your first house. Yeah. So what was the deal with that? Like somebody else owned it? It was messed she up. She sold us the house and then... Like, we went through all the stuff of getting the loan and putting in an offer and blah, 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 blah. And it, we were we were right to the point of, like, within a week of closing, 
it turned out that maybe she didn't actually have title to the house and they had to had to go before a court and there was a big hearing and but uh, apparently it's all turned out all right so we're going to we're going to buy that house tell me about it or congrats to find tell us about it it's a uh, <laughs> it's a really sweet little townhouse in prairie village i'm going to edit What's this the out address because I don't want all of our legions of fans coming to my door, but I can tell you, you didn't give your address. that it's one two three Apple Tree Lane. <laughs> That's my fake address. <laughs> <laughs> one two three Apple Tree, Tree Lane. Attention contains live ants. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Mullis, care of Under the Candy Apple Tree. <laughs> Yeah, fake addresses would be a good segment. Oh, well, the segment, the segments this this week really suck. I thought spirit um, animals would be a great segment, but I guess not. Well, that's over now. We can't. Yeah, you know. Segment two. Should we? Can we do segment two? Yeah, go ahead. What is it? It's your segment. It's oh, Judge John Gibson. Yeah, I think we can do Wait, that. That's, shouldn't that be my segment? No. No, no, okay. no! We, we just did your thing. The Honorable Judge John Gibson for no, no, no! You, you, that's a pretty good podcast. Maybe we the should Honorable just talk about Judge okay. podcast. You guys, let me let me explain. Is there really can a I, podcast? If okay, Judge John let, can we have a Jeremy sidebar talk. here? Let, let have Jeremy a sidebar. Talk. Sidebar. Here, sidebar. He really wants to make an argument. Let him talk. Okay, so, talk now, Jeremy. So, if you want, I've found if you want your topic to go well. <laughs> One useful technique is like early on in the topic, explain what you want to talk about during that topic. <laughs> like, oh, wait I, a minute, wait like, a minute. so for instance, if I announce segment two, Judge John Gibson, and then Chris, this is your segment, right. so you would say like, okay, so here's what this okay, segment yeah, it, in is. In my, usually, he does that kind in, of thing. In my defense. <laughs> I started to do that, and then everyone began talking at once. Well, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to wrangle these. That is a first. These. Yeah, I know. It, 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 it was unexpected. It was not an expected development. You take the, you take the bait, in though. The past. You take the bait. You got to wrangle them. You got to whoop them into shape. I, you know, right here, we're in your segment lyrics? now. You take the bait. You take the bait. <laughs> got to whip them into shape. <laughs> take the bait. Because yeah. I've just totally bogarted your segment with a procedural, like, I'm, rant. I think the Lecture. problem is um, I'm not used to having all four of us here on the podcast anymore. And it's four definitely... Four is probably too many. It's definitely yeah, four is, a lot more challenging. Four is my is. spirit number. It's, it's, maybe it did seem to go better when I wasn't here. <laughs> maybe we should... Shit, it went maybe, better for you. You didn't have to put just, up with this shit. When were you not here, Jonathan? Probably a time I wasn't yeah, here. Yeah, when weren't you here, John? There was. Some I've time. always been here. Maybe every week one person should be randomly <laughs> eliminated right when we all show up. <laughs> no, no, afterwards, depending on whose performance was the worst. Mm. That way, will it'll be a carrot to. You oh, know. that's right. John wasn't. Um, John wasn't in episode two. No, I mean no. He was present for it, oh. but his his audio didn't record. Oh yeah, that was why there is no episode two. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a hidden episode. Okay, so in this segment, we should probably each have our own podcast. So in this segment, um, I, I actually just... have two other podcasts. <laughs> oh, God. Besides the food one, what is there? Oh well, there's oh, you well, don't know John and I with attitude. Podcast? John and I have a podcast called Attitude Adjustment that is devoted. <laughs> 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 it is devoted I'm still working on the name. Ex- <laughs> no, I, I think it works. I think it's a good one. Ex- so go subscribe. We might come up with something better. It's no, That's pretty it's good. Prob- the working title is Attitude Adjustment. And uh, on Attitude Adjustment, we uh, we talk about the video game Dudes with Attitude. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we adjusting? You know? That well, doesn't really make sense. We're adjusting your attitude towards the video game Dudes with Attitude. <laughs> The for the listeners at home, this is a uh, video game for the. Oh, they know. Uh, original... They know. We have discussed. <laughs> yeah, oh, did you guys go over this last week when I wasn't here? On every episode, if you're aware of for the this last game, few you months, don't, you don't need any adjustment. No, you do. You need some adjustment to get used to the you're controls. Super into it. 
You know, because you're de by default, you're oscillating yeah, back and this forth. This has all been discussed <laughs> at great length on this podcast. I find them fairly <laughs> intuitive. <laughs> 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 Maybe, maybe. I mean, maybe others can chime oh, in on I this, need... but I find the controls fairly intuitive. That that'll probably be the topic of our first episode. Well, I mean, I figure on our first episode we're going to talk about the level high there, right? I don't remember that level. Just. What do you mean you don't rem I have never played the game Dudes with Attitude, and I remember the level high there because they have talked about it before on this podcast. Oh, high which is there. Not I about you... Dudes with Attitude. I thought you said high bear. Like, hi, bear. <laughs> hi, bird. Oh, you Aren't we supposed to be judging me? Oh, I, you know, I keep Man, trying. Man, like, your podcast sucks. I'm, Segment you two. Don't even... Judge right John Gibson. So just to clarify, <laughs> in this segment... No, John, you need to be present for this segment. No, that's the joke. Uh, it was another visual gag, though. No one can see that he's left. So in, To the audience at home... For the audience at home, John has left the podcast? He's left the frame. This is... And we just see his... All we see is his okay. jerry-rigged microphone duct-tape to a, some kind of stick. So to clear... With a, with a crude window frame in the background. Maybe a fan going in the... In the, in the... <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the... On the... On the... You know... A lot of good photos for this episode. Place, yeah. place where the yeah. picture Now goes. we just need some humorous audio content. <laughs> so... To clarify, Judge John Gibson is a wholly original and not at all derivative podcast segment that we do sometimes, where the three of us, or listeners, can write in and accuse John of various crimes or shortcomings or misdemeanors, and uh -huh. we judge him. We, we, we put him on trial and judge him. Do we... Now, let me ask you this. Yes. Are we trying – you make an accusation and then we discuss it and determine his guilt or innocence? Or exactly. we just kind of sit there smoldering like, like – mm, No, no. We, we, like we, dis kind of we, discuss, him. we discuss the accusation and we judge yeah, we his guilt, or, in, guilt or innocence. Oh, I like that. That's a good segment. Good Thank idea. You. Thank you. Okay, D Danny, play the music that signals the start of Judge John – Gibson. And am I correct that it's just the attitude? Alright. Welcome to Judge John Gibbs Judge John Gibson. Uh does anybody All else rise. have an accusation against John Gibson? I have one if you guys aren't ready to go. Does it have to no, be a ahead. negative accusation? No, it can be it could be anything. Okay, you, well you go you, first. You have to use the word accuse though. So I okay. I accuse John of having been a little bit chubby as a child. Ooh. <laughs> Objection. What happens after that? We, well, we discuss the we discuss the <laughs> the accusation and then well, we reach you a judgment. Well, you grew up. I think I'm a little bit chubby now. <laughs> <laughs> you look good to me. You look That's not you look, you look uh, very that's well not the issue at hand. To is the that, listening I mean, audience, John head? looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what? He's actually seven hundred pounds. <laughs> he takes up the whole frame. <laughs> he is a waif-like seven hundred pounds. Well, he's um, extremely tall. So, so Chris, what ages? What ages are we considering here? I'm gonna say somewhere on the order of like eight to twelve. Yeah, he was a little chubby. I mean, sometimes, like, he'd go to summer camp, and he'd come back, and he'd be really slim. And you'd be like, man, that summer camp is, uh, you know, it's really whipping him into shape. Is that but then true? He, That's what happens when you go to labor camp. Yeah, but then he'd get, he'd, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, too bad they don't let you stay there year-round. He'd get that's back, uh, he'd get back to Kansas City, and, uh, you know, I, I mean, if I had had, like, 365-day-a-year access to their pantry... I would have been enormous, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, I mean, like that pantry, there were, there were they had those goldfish there all the time and Cheez-Its. Yeah, there's like food coming out of it constantly. Yeah. There was like the triple wide box of Cheez-Its. 
I mean, with three separate packs inside. So I think it's totally <laughs> justified. Is that a thing? They have a triple pack? I, I don't think I've seen that. Maybe that's a New York thing. I don't know. Yeah, that must be a New York thing. Oh, sophisticated New York. <laughs> Are you talking about Cheez-Its? Yeah, sophisticated New York Cheez-Its. Yeah, man. What do you guys like? It? Have fun with your like cheese nips. <laughs> what are your are so, so what are the what are the Walmart off-brand uh, uh, cheddar squares? <laughs> or maybe no, they also have whales. Isn't there one with a penguin? Yeah, penguins. Chris probably knows about that. Yeah, well, it's my spirit cracker. A, Chris probably yeah. knows all about I was, that. Um, I was in the Target a few weeks ago, and I saw the white cheddar Cheez-Its that you guys had been talking about. No, no, no. What, oh, those what, have been around for ages. Well, yeah. you were talking yeah, about are, them on the podcast. I right? had I had mentioned them. And I hadn't there are like them before. There are like eight different flavors of Cheez-Its now, and they're Name all them. bad. Name the them. Great... Name them. The white well, cheddar there's like jalapeno... One. There's Jumpin' Jack. Two. Holiday Inn. There's three. There's white cheddar. <laughs> Four. There's, there's reduced fat. Five. Whoa, 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 reduced Big fat is Cheez-It. not a flavor. Okay, variety. Okay, five. Uh, whole, isn't there a whole... Cheez-It, Cheez-It twists. Okay. No, that, that, that discontinued that. Cheez-It... Um, oh, there's Big Cheez-It. Did I say that already? Uh, six. And I don't mean like a big box. I mean the cheeses themselves are big. <laughs> also, not really a flavor, but it's so awesome that I'm going to allow it. No, That's I mean basically, I've World already corrected of myself. Super Mario Brothers three. Oh, there's Scrabble cheese it. Seven. Scrabble cheese it. it form seven. You need one more. Uh, there's uh, I think like Spider Man cheese it. Excellent. Eight. Congratulations. Wait, there are Spider Man cheese its. Well, there's yeah. There, there's, they, they're do just they taste square. Like Spider Man. They taste like spiders. I don't know about Spider Man. No, they're just they're square, <laughs> regular flavored Cheez Its, and they have it. They're like while they were being cooked, they got stamped by a machine vaguely shaped like a spider. Now, which <laughs> which um which Spider Man are they based shaped. on? Are they based on like regular Spider Man or the Amazing Spider Man? Because I'm told those are different things. I you're gonna have to talk to Sunshine about that. I will. Okay. Expect a letter, Sunshine Biscuit Company. Um, I'm, I guess, so is that guilty? Well, should, I mean, how do we determine guilt or innocence? Do we vote? No, it has to be a majority to convict. I would say, I mean, does, I mean, it has John, to be a... does John get a vote? Yeah, he gets to okay, see so why we not, need to. Know. So we could just have a hung jury. We could, yeah. Otherwise, it couldn't be a time. Yeah. So... The the exact accusation you're accusing him of having been a little chubby, yeah, between the between ages about of eight, eight, and and eight and twelve, approximately. Yeah, now that's kind of a vague, a vague, uh, vague term, isn't it? A little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't we be? Shouldn't we be sequestered? No, no. Yeah, that's why I say we should each need our own podcast. <laughs> Seems like that's a thing that should happen now. Well, I mean, I actually have three podcasts, but. <laughs> yeah, but you only record one of them. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it takes a little while to get actually, a my uh, the cheese it packs true. in uh, New York have are triple. Okay, <laughs> I'd say. I mean, a lot of men are sexually ambivalent, but uh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I'm gonna say I'm gonna say not guilty. Oh, you're gonna acquit. I'm going to acquit. Now, wait a minute. Do you mean not guilty as in I don't think that's true or not guilty as in you think that's not something that is, you know, a, a punishable offense? It means I don't think that's true in this case. You right. you can accuse him of positive things. And in that I case, if he's guilty, then it's good. I think, I think there is... I think we have established reasonable doubt. I'm not sure we have, but you, <coughs> you have personally mentioned... Oh. Him yeah. at times looking fairly trim, particularly yeah. after returning from camp. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And to me, you know, we have to look at like we're talking about a four-year period. Yeah. In aggregate, was he? Can I say definitively that he was a little chubby during that time? I would say that the fact that his svelte figure was notable when he came home from camp. 
you know, that it was worth noticing was and mentioning. And I ask you this. I, uh-huh. I'm going to... Can I... Do you mind if I... Do you guys mind if I cross? They're not listening. Now... You crossed the line a long time ago. When, uh... So... This may be a music-heavy y- episode. You have made no, reference... This is a great segment, and I'm totally listening. You have and made reference to John returning from Kuchiching. That's the camp the for the listeners at summer home. camp, and at that time, you noticed that he was looking more trim? Yes. Can you yes. tell me when this was? I don't know. End of summer? Mm-hmm. Well, if he was oh, man, eight, I'm, it would be I'm, 19... I'm crumbling on the witness nine. stand. Well, I'm curious because this, also, this sounds suspiciously like something our mother said. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I don't remember our mother ever saying something mean like that about poor little John. Uh, what a... I think I, re- I think I remember Ashley saying it once, but not, not our mother. I remember people saying that. I do not remember ever noticing that myself. Mm. Maybe it was just scurrilous gossip. All right. Do we have a verdict? I, I, I say acquit. I say guilty. Danny? I say no no contest. I don't know what that means. <laughs> John? I, we pleaded maybe. maybe. You. Guilty. So I we think we've two, got a hung jury. We have two guilties, an abstention, I guess you call <laughs> that. And an equi- hey, Look, if John says guilty, I'll say guilty. I'll go with John. Guilty. Guilty. Who has, uh, who has a gavel? Guilty as charged. I'll put it. I'll put the gavel in and post. Okay. Okay. Gavel sound now. Like a real right. echoey one. Thank like you. Really thank like... you. Okay. Gavel sound again. Now. With echo. Does no, it... that's, okay, so... I think that's a little over the top, don't you think? I okay. Mean... Okay. Moderate <laughs> gavel sound with echo. Now. <laughs> I'll put it in and post. Can we know, can we just, try like maybe a placeholder. maybe the sound of a gong? Uh, no, no. Segment three. Yo, uh, so no, uh, uh, the rest of us, the other, we, we all, uh, we all have to make an, uh, an accusation, right? Well, we don't all have to. If someone else oh. has an accusation they'd like to make, um, you know, the floor is open. I got nothing. I was just like I, wondering see, if I should I'm, I'm assuming force myself that in the future. Listeners will write in their accusations, you know, and we'll have a whole lot oh. to choose from. Chris, uh, but because I was going to say, it was really segment. selfish of you to use your own question and instead of the hundreds that are in our inbox right now. I, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of those were about him having been a little chubby, though, to be fair. They were mostly from my mom. Topic three. <laughs> Part three. Okay, Danny, topic three is you. <laughs> topic three is um, topic three is hilarious visual gags, which is moderated by D. Gunnard Beamish. Danny, We've been doing wait, this maybe, segment periodically throughout the podcast. <laughs> maybe we should do that basketball one again. Oh, what exa- what was it? What exactly is it that makes basketball so funny? Slash. Why is Danny a racist? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't. <laughs> I never. I don't even remember that. Was that added like after I like didn't show that up? Was, that was that was that was not the official topic title. So just just answer the question, Danny. Why are you a racist? Well, you know, I mean, it's. I mean, honestly, it's pretty obvious why. Uh huh. Because the ball is bouncing up and down, <laughs> and, <laughs> and everybody's really tall and lanky, and there's that silly music playing with the whistling. I, I don't think they usually play Sweet Georgia Brown during a regulation basketball game. You know what? And you want to know? You want to get really depressed? Yeah, yeah. They don't really play it at Harlem Globetrotters basketball games. I disagree. That much. Oh, that much. That's true. It's not playing the actually, whole time. Actually, okay. Actually, it's not playing the whole time. They play it occasionally. <laughs> Danny, have you ever seen a basketball would... game that wasn't the Harlem Globetrotters? <laughs> yeah, you. Know, I mean, you know damn well that our father used to take us to see the Kansas Jayhawks, and we would have to go. 
We have to hear that song that went, but a ba dum Hey! but a da dun dun da dun Hey! Hey! da 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 dun You know. That's a pretty funny song. That's a great song. Is that the one that goes like, da 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 Hey! da 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 or are you thinking of a yes, different one? It's the one that no, went that exactly like one. I just because it sounded yeah, very called... similar, but it was like a different tune. Are there two sort of sportsy songs with where they shout "Hey"? The... Hey! There might, there might be more than two of those. Hey! I think I was thinking no. of like a, a Gary Glitter song. No, that is isn't it? It's called Rock and Roll yeah. Part Two. Yeah. Okay, we're thinking of the same song. Rock and I'm thinking, roll part. I'm, right now, three. I'm thinking of Yakety Sax. That's also. <laughs> <a good one. laughs> so you guys know. That's the Benny Hill theme, right? Yes. That is, in fact, the Benny Hill theme. I think we no. mentioned it last podcast. Well, I wouldn't know that. Think how funny. I haven't... Think how funny a game of basketball would be if it were played to Yakety Sax. Uh, I, I, Maybe yeah. in speed. I mean, it on, up. Only if it were in sped. Yeah, exactly. In fast motion. Here's a <laughs> okay. Here's a question I I, I have, and this is really yeah. to uh, I think to Chris and to Danny because uh-huh. you of the four of us, I oh, think you are right. the two who have been to a Harlem Globetrotters basketball game. I have. That's right. And uh, twice, twice, Danny. Oh. And twice. Uh, Chris, I think you were quite impressed. By the Harlem Globetrotters, thought it was a great show, really enjoyed yourself. Danny, yes. I, my recollection is that you were somewhat disappointed by their antics. Let me, let me clarify, Jeremy. Um, when I saw the Harlem Globetrotters for the first time, when I was 10, it was a transcendental experience. <laughs> <laughs> I even came home with a cassette single of, Har- of the uh, Harlem Globetrotters theme. Sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you were like too young to appreciate it. Then. <laughs> well, that's the thing is maybe I was maybe I was no cut this out. Can I ask? You didn't get all on the, the flip side of the single. There was a uh, with the, the A side was Sweet Georgia yeah, Brown, the, and the, the content sli- of the single may not was, be the most important relevant. It was called Black Eyed Susan Brown. Can I ask you a point of clarification? Do you remember that movie we made called The Fridge? Can I ask The Fridge of Dreams. The Fridge of Dreams. Remember that? Listeners will recall was... the short film Fridge of Dreams. <laughs> the massively successful 1989 which, short. Which we made in the late short. 80s. Danny, can I? No, but the premise of, can we just like get into the premise of it? The premise of Fridge of Dreams? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> this guy walks up to a refrigerator opens the refrigerator uh-huh. and instead of just like food being in like well maybe there's food in there but yeah it was it, unclear the shot, what was in the shot stays wide so you don't really see the, con- the the door opens towards the camera so you can't see the contents of the refrigerator the contents but remain as as the refrigerator, in mystery yeah exactly it's, <clears throat> in, it's open to interpretation but as soon as the refrigerator door opens you hear uh, the, the song <laughs> New York New York by Frank Sinatra <laughs> And then when the door, sh- and then of course the guy backs away, sort of shocked, shocked. shocked. And then, but when the door shuts, the song stops again. So it's yeah. clearly the song is coming out of the refrigerator. Yeah. And it's a lot like that scene in Ghostbusters, or the scene in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where the singing sword starts singing, and then yeah, it, basically any scene in any movie that has music in it, they're similar in that regard. But anyway, that movie, that movie was. Uh, as am- amazingly, you know, good as it was, there was the ending credits that were really made that movie. Do you recall that? No, I. You don't I remember? Do, not. do you? Do you seriously not, or you just want me to say it for the? What go, happened go in the ending credits? credits? You do remember? You just. Oh, you sure. I remember. Yeah. No, honestly, no, I no, thought no. you. No, I thought you were talking. It. I thought you were talking about the sandwich until you started explaining. No, the the, the credits had that music. Like, wah, wah, wah. Black eyed Susan Brown. Wah, wah. Black eyed Susan Brown. Wah, wah. Yeah, yeah. The flip side of the two Georgia Brown cassettes. Yeah, the understand. credits were the best part of that film. Okay, it's the film where the the credits are. You just oh. cut to like a, the whiteboard, and and the music comes on, and Danny is like. Tapped 
dancing sort of yeah. to the music. And yeah. you and John come on, no. and you, you know, he says, and like, J- Jeremy's like, guy, guy one, by me. by me, lady, by me, not, not me. me. <laughs> oh, that and is. that's the credits. Why didn't we do that for every movie? Yeah. And every uh, song. Oh, we should do that in this podcast as well. <laughs> Wait, so that's so that song is called D Gunned Beamish by Me. <laughs> that's one. Okay, so that's one. That's why the first time I saw the Harlem Globetrotters, it was a positive experience. Now, because you because you had never heard the song Black Eyed Susan Brown before, or well, it was why is that? Why exactly? Well, I was a, ch- a child seeing a novelty basketball game, so I was I was in awe, you know. Can, as a point of clarification, before you went to see the game, had you been fasting for several days and taking peyote? <laughs> Uh, well, I, that was yeah. I was in, in the middle of my uh, my uh, spirit quest, um, and that's how I found out that my uh, that's how I found out that my my spirit animal is is Showbiz Jackson from that's the Harlem Club. I was trying to remember. Oh, no, I wanted to Tatum. ask about five to ten minutes ago. <laughs> so, so. Uh, Danny, I, I, I believe you were telling us about your feelings on the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, well, and okay. So, to review, so, since it's been a while, I believe you said the first time you saw them, you were about 10 years old, and it was a transcendent experience. Yeah, I mean, because I, I not only was it a great basketball game, but... But they were they did all the trappings, you know, they they brought a ladder out, they spun basketballs on their fingers, they What did they do with the ladder? They walked they wandered around with it and like one of the, you know, they'd climb up it and <laughs> easily reach the basket in contrast to the normal challenge of basketball. But did Chris just leave? He'll be back. Is he's offended that I called it novelty basketball? <laughs> Cause it does take a lot of skill. But, uh, yeah, you know, they had, like, a bucket of, of water that they would, like, throw on each other. Like, you know, the Goose Tatum would walk up to the, some, you know, the forward of the Washington Generals with a bucket and, like, throw water in his face. And then later in the game, he'd come out with another bucket and he'd walk up to the audience and he would, like, act like he was going to throw water in their face and he would do it. But then the bucket was actually filled with confetti. <laughs> yeah, that's that's... I've heard of that gag before. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that that gag was mentioned on our previous <laughs> podcast, and I didn't really understand it. That's not true. Yeah, is like that I true? was like, I, it, it, <laughs> that is true. It is was. That true? It was. Chris it, brought it up, and he was like, "Well, they used to have this bucket that you thought was filled with water, but it turned out to be." Uh, I don't think he said confetti. I think he said like artificial snakes. He said <laughs> glitter. Yeah, I think and he's I, and I was there. like, well, the, what's the joke there? I mean, like, why would you assume it was water? Yeah, but I didn't get the because first, it had been set up previously in the game. Yeah, he, yeah. Did, he didn't explain it very well, honestly. Well, I mean, it's Chris, which is you know, that's why you're here now. You know, it's just it's such a boon yeah, to this podcast. I've, so tell well, us about the second time that you went to see the Harlem Globetrotters later in life. Okay. okay, the second time uh, I had I'd recently graduated from college. And I was I was I was um, seeing a girl, and I decided to I wanted to really really treat her right for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> you can see where this is going because I I think our relationship was starting to crumble a little bit, and I, I wanted to sort of you know do just do something really nice. So I sort of talked it up. I was like, Man, you know. I got a real, real nice surprise for you. Like, you know, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna, I didn't tell her what was going on. I was just like, you know, like, I want you to keep Saturday night free. <laughs> Don't make any plans for Saturday night, cause, cause, uh, well, I can't tell you. <laughs> you know, so basically all but like led her with the blindfold to what I honestly like, like, with with absolute sincerity at the time believed to be a, a, an unbelievably romantic event. <laughs> Wait, were you planning Which... to propose? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I was just... It's like I thought it she was going to think it was a bucket of water, but then there was just a ring in it. 
Those are. <laughs> Do they have a no. jumbotron at basketball games? Yeah, I told you about the Philip Seymour Hoffman jumbotron, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, it's yes. a big jumbotron well, yeah, shaped like I mean, Philip Seymour like... Hoffman's skull. <laughs> but what? do they train the camera on unsuspecting people in the crowd and then invite you to oh. heckle them like they do at baseball games? Oh, like how they, they have the in, in the naked gun. And they have the blowjob cam and stuff. <laughs> the urinal <What>? cam? <laughs> no, no, we're talking about regulation <laughs> novelty basketball. <laughs> Not underground novelty basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah i mean actually the the whole like like bait and switch bucket of water becomes a bucket of confetti fake out sort of an apt metaphor for how the evening went um except for it was the confetti first and then the water in the face was the the was was the uh now let's let's take it from from earlier um so yeah, I thought we I thought it was going to be a really nice evening, you know, cuz you know, l- put it to you this way, if my girlfriend had been like, I, you know, I got a surprise for you Saturday night. Don't make any plans. And I took off the blindfold and I was in Bridgeport, Connecticut at a Harlem Globetrotters basketball game. I would think that was bar none the most romantic thing that had ever happened to me. <laughs> So, so it didn't go well. Well, I mean, the, no, the, the Harlem Globetrotters won. <laughs> oh, thank God for that! I was, I was worried there. For a because it, did you guys know that they Washington? The were due. No, the Washington Generals do win every now and then. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's not, a, it's not entirely scripted. I mean, like the gags are scripted. It's like wrestling, isn't it? No, there's mm. there's like eleven people on each team. I mean, oh it's, yeah, it's, and the court is much bigger. Right, and there's like a basketball or something. I've never the, seen it. So. There's exactly a basketball. No, but what? Yeah. <laughs> one thing that struck me, besides being incredibly disappointed by the fact that my girlfriend did not think that the Harlem Globetrotters was an amazing ber- <laughs> Valentine's Day surprise, <laughs> was that the Harlem Globetrotters themselves seem to be. Not nearly as uh, hilarious as I remembered them being, and I'm not sure if they had declined in quality or if I w- it was just the fact that I wasn't ten anymore. But how could she be disappointed by that? See, exactly. Ooh, maybe she had been when she was ten. <laughs> was that what she said to you? Like, it's just it just wasn't as amazing as when my last boyfriend surprised me by taking me to the <laughs> <laughs> Harlem Globetrotters, and I. No, I, I think that by the time the Globetrotters, you know, took the court, uh, we were already not speaking. <laughs> so, well, well, I was, you know, hooting and hollering and ordering hot dogs and shit, like you're supposed to do. But I think she was, she wasn't really mad. She was just kind of like inscrutable, I think, as it were, just like she was couldn't quite believe that it was true like maybe like the real evening was happening like the whole the Harlem Globetrotters were gonna like actually come up to her and say just kidding here's a really nice dinner (laughs) or something (laughs) so did she tell you why she was disappointed or did she just not speak to you at all after that point uh no you know what she didn't tell me and you know that's just you know women right did you even yeah like maybe she was more into like some other novelty sports team (laughs) <laughs> she really, yeah. She, like she had her heart set on skee ball. <laughs> she like if there's a, a, a like a baseball team that does the equivalent of the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, see, that's a multi-million dollar uh, idea there. Oh yeah. What, uh, but 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 hold on, that Copyright leads us back to an important point. I don't think a novelty team of any other sport would be as funny, because there is something inherently humorous about basketball. Hmm. And I think it has to do with the fact that you're constantly bouncing something up and down. See, I think we covered this last time. I mean, I think, like, if, if they length. need a novelty team to make it funny, doesn't that mean that it's no, not no, funny no, no, on its no, own? No, 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 The novelty no. team is an enhancing. No. You're getting the cart before the horse there. <laughs> I th- you well, know, I think... You, it, I mean, you have to get the cart before you... I mean, 
Yeah, okay. All right. No, no, a horse would be useful even without a cart. You could ride the horse. Depends what on what else? kind of cart it was, really. What are you, you going to do with a cart without the horse? I like guess you could have some dude pull it, like a rickshaw. <laughs> Shaped like Philip Seymour Hoffman's head. I have to say, I'm kind of, I'm kind of swayed by this argument actually, because I'm trying to imagine what antics you would do at a novelty baseball game. Yeah. And I don't really know much about sports, but <clears throat> like what, we, like what, what would you do with the ladder? Well, because you know? like, nothing to. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, because like when you go to a basketball game you're a bit closer to the players than like if you're at like a baseball game or a football game is yeah. that correct right uh, I mean, it, it might depends depend on, on where you're sitting i believe that is in, true i mean the 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 playing area is smaller that's true so maybe somebody can back me up on that but that's i think true. it's a different basketball shape games are generally I mean, smaller like I don't if, know, maybe soccer might be about they're the same usually thing, indoors so. like if someone's doing like goofy antics you know, if you're, like, playing baseball, like, half the time someone's, like, way across, you know, the action's going uh, going on, like, way far away yeah. from you, other side of the field. If someone's... No, but I, I, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's... Yeah, no, it'd be like, okay. what, what's I, that I, guy got? Is, is that a ladder you think or it's, something? No, I don't you know think what it's that the is. ball bouncing up and down. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody is really tall and skinny, and it's like a, like a, it's like a, like an old-timey movie in fast motion. And everybody's kind of hopping up and down doing this, trying to, like, keep the basketball from going over their heads. I don't know. It just it's always indoors and there's always like like it's always echoing and there's always that horn that goes That would have been <laughs> that would have been funnier if you had pulled up an air horn just then and blown it into the mic. I've been waiting an hour and a half for that moment. <laughs> just waiting for someone to min some excuse right. to mention an air horn. <laughs> so you could say I was like holding it down. I, I can't I want to use it so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to I do want to say uh as the other person here who has seen the Harlem Globetrotters in person um because when I went to see them I was I don't know 17 or so. And I think I had dramatically lower expectations than Danny did going in that time. And did so you go, I did you was, go with a girl? Uh, it was with a group of friends. I think we were going largely ironically, and mm. we were surprised by how entertaining the Harlem Globetrotters were. You kind of, you kind like of, we were, you, we had low expectations, and we were won over by their zany antics. It's kind of like how I feel about the movie Spice World. <laughs> Very possibly, yeah. yes. But not to get onto that. Except for the except for the low expectations part. Okay, so you but I mean so you guys both <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, obviously. Just <laughs> I mean just that it was really great. But um <laughs> So okay, no, so I I had I had kind of come into this discussion under the assumption that you guys had kind of differing opinions of the Harlem Globetrotters, and it kind of sounds like you guys both think the Harlem Globetrotters are hilarious and great. Well, I, no, I, I mean, I, enjoyed, I think in, con in I concept, the they are. I mean, whenever they appear on Scooby-Doo, they're always funny. And whenever I'm 10, they're funny. But the, these days, and when I say these days, I mean literally 10 years ago... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they seem to be going through the motions. And maybe mm. it's because they've been a novelty basketball team for like 60 years doing the same stupid stilts joke. But, well, but, it's not the same guys, right? Like, it, it hasn't been the same dudes for 60 years, has it? I think it was the same dudes for a very long time. Because that would be really great if Showbiz Johnson... Is he Showbiz Jackson? Showbiz Jackson. Jackson. Showbiz, yeah. Like, if that guy was like 87 years old now. I wonder if there was like a big controversy... When they started introducing new people, like if there were new, you know, there's like a vocal contingent of, of the fans. I think it's who were like, I, oh, you know, these guys are are not. I don't know. Deal, you know, I think I think th no, the real controversy was the accusations of doping. <laughs> 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 and there's simply no way that a you know a, a, a person could spin a basketball that fast on their index <laughs> finger. I thought the accusations were that the Washington Generals were on quaaludes. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody uh, actually 
actually know what quaaludes are. Yes. I don't know. Like I know downers? it's kind of a downer. Quaaludes. No. Um, so it's kind it's, of a downer that you guys know that. It's, I don't. I, I, it has two A's, which is like, uh. That's yeah, it how makes I remember it seem it. really laid it's like back. like Qatar or something. Quaaludes are in. They're basically in the same family of drugs as. Uh, I don't actually care. Okay. Oh, come on, Jonathan. Yeah, that's way to shut way to shut down oh. discussion. Oh, I'm you, sorry. No, you finally tapped no, into something, go ahead, Jeremy. Go ahead. Yeah, it's you know, when, when you're when you're doing a group podcast, you respond with a yes and. Yes and. But the, not yeah. with that kind of forget it. Yeah, huh? forget it. Okay, so what I Quaaludes. let's we'll uh. we'll come back to it, <laughs> Jeremy. Why don't you make your topic next next podcast Quaaludes. Yeah, it's a good idea. That is a, that is a good topic. Quaaludes yeah. and their discontents. <laughs> all, all right. Wait, but my here's here's the here's the the, the corker to my disappointment. I, I started to get into it, but they, they not only do they not play the Harlem Globetrotters theme the entire time they're on the court, <laughs> they play like they play generic hip hop music for almost the entire time. Do they do that? I don't even remember that. Well, that was when when you, if you were seeing the Harlem Globetrotters, ironically, it was probably in like nineteen. 19- I right? would have said earlier. I was in high school, so let's let's call it. Well, you were in high school in nineteen. 19- well, I graduated in. So from know, was, from high school. Yeah. So let's you were call, in let's at call the time. it. I was in high. For the benefit of listeners, I was in high school for several years. So now we know what year you graduated from high school and the name of the huge village you live in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you meet Globy when you went to see the Harlem Globetrotters? No. What is they it, had a mascot? A, yeah, they had a, a huge, mascot. Like he a was plush a, a, a dude in, a, in an enormous globe costume. Like he was, you know, because they're the globe trotters. He was like a globe. Uh, it seemed know. weird that they would need a humorous yeah, mascot because yeah. their whole gig was to. He was actually um, to provide some, you know, some contrast. He was actually extremely serious. That's a good, a good counter counterpart. But I don't remember anything about the game except for, except for all the like Harlem Globetrotters cliches that I already knew about coming into it and the fact that I was a little confused as to why my girlfriend wasn't swept off her feet. <laughs> can, can we get into that just slightly? Because I wonder if you aren't taking out, taking this out on the Harlem Globetrotters a little bit. Like, you had well, a bad time at that game because you were going through some relationship stuff and maybe that's coloring your experience of the show that the Harlem Globetrotters were putting on. I'm, I mean, maybe, sounds like a real bitch. Is this no, your wife? No, she's actually totally... Uh, no, she's not... Who is this? I Natalie think, Mayhew? I, I, you know, I, I, in, all, in all honesty, I think you should probably break up with this girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that what... Is, well, since, is that since, what uh, she's supposed to decide whether you should stay with this chick or not? <laughs> well, let me just I'm, tell you... I'm going mean, to say guilty. This, it was... Ten years ago that I took her to see the Harlem Globetrotters, and she only now just stopped having sex with me nonstop. So, <laughs> so no. Yeah, that'll happen. I, I see what you mean, and maybe, I don't know. I, I, after it was, it was obvious that it was not the, you know, like, Ace in the hole that I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I just decided that I was going to have a good time at least. So I was really like I was. I sort of forgot about the circumstances and you know just just try to enjoy enjoy the Harlem Globetrotters doing their thing. I, you know, I yeah. really like that you chose to use the metaphor Ace in the hole. <laughs> Instead of slam dunk, even though it was, even though it was not a correct metaphor to use in that, case. It seemed like you were Can kind we of take even that again? searching for like right. what is the correct metaphor, and then you chose like one that like ace in the hole. That's not even what you mean. 
<laughs> I mean, slam dunk. Like okay, the ace so- in the hole. Ace in the hole would have been like if you had made reservations at a fancy restaurant in case she didn't like the Harlem Globetrotters game, mm, right? Yeah, I guess. But I mean, really, like a, a slam dunk is something you just yeah, uh, you know, like. Why would you? I'm going that? to make a slam dunk, and then you go yeah, do it. No, to be fair, Danny, you really fouled out on that metaphor. No, I yeah, th- see. I, mean, I read. I gave him too much credit. I was thinking that was like a joke. He was intentionally oh, like a thinking, double fake. I don't know. I, are you looking at a list Wait. of basketball terms now? Isn't <laughs> foul out something you do in baseball? Yeah, I you was foul in I, many sports. Yeah, in basketball, you just foul. No, that's why I said it because yeah. it was it was inappropriate in the same way that ace in the hole was. Chris, that's really good. Thank you. You're welcome. I feel like there was something else I was going to say. Could have been. I can't remember what that thing might have been. I used to know one thing. That the Harlem Globetrotters were funny. Harlem Globetrotters. But... As it turns out, I was so naive. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't it know. was only perception. It was only the mindset of a child. Joe the mindset Jackson. of an innocent child. I used to think carry. To a basketball court Such an unconventional idea I used to think that Wearing stilts on a basketball court Was an unconventional idea The first time I saw Bucket. I didn't know what was inside. Could be anything you might find in a bucket. Then I learned there was water in the bucket. When Goose Tatum threw the water. In the face of Shobies Jackson but, And just when I thought I had it all figured out That second bucket That second bucket oh, Bucket number two It's always the <laughs> that one That second bucket Faked me out there wasn't water in the bucket. Oh, tell us the what it was. That, tell us what it was. The bucket that they threw on the crowd. I was pretty Probably sure there would them. be water in the bucket when they threw it on the crowd. But I don't have to tell you. It was confetti! Nothing but confetti! song didn't even play the one with the whistling it didn't play even when the confetti sprayed it didn't play it didn't make my day there was no confetti to partake of it was well it was confetti and there was no water <laughs> there was no water Oh. It's like I can still feel the whistling. The whistling I wish I heard back then. And the t shirts with $35! Why should I pay $35 to look like a Harlem Globe Trotter? And they didn't sell. They didn't sell any of the tapes with theme songs. Like I remembered 
It was just a dream song back then. Back then, I can't go back to then when I was ten and now everything was spectacular. That's nice. Yes, that was that cat, all right. <laughs> So, segment that was four. the best. That was the best thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, segment four is hay versus straw, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, this is my segment. I just uh, I, I thought that this was uh, worth clearing up because there's a lot of confusion from time to time. We we kind of use these terms interchangeably and. And hay and straw are actually separate things. Um, What's all this we stuff? You know, people. What, do you not confuse hay and straw ever? I don't know. I, just I, I was confused that. about this topic because when I looked at the spreadsheet and I saw it said hay versus straw, <laughs> which I totally, this is something that I did do and I'm not lying about. I thought that it was like which one would win in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a we can. That's a corollary to this topic. Yeah, yeah I, I thought mean, it was yeah. more like which one I mean, is better. I have a good answer for this. Are well, you just Jeremy? Are you just wanting to outline how they're different, or are we supposed to choose which one is this, superior? This this was intended as more of a clarification. <laughs> yeah, I think that straw would obviously win. So that's a boring wait, wait, topic. wait, 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 wait. You're coming <laughs> down on straw's side. <laughs> Straw's all dry and sharp. Now, that's a good point. Danny obviously <laughs> knows what he's talking about, because straw is dry. Yeah. They're not the same thing. No, they're different things. No, they're completely different. Maybe Look, perhaps we should I, do the clarification. I, I wish first. I could get into it, but I don't know enough about it, well, Jeremy. Do you, so Jeremy, basically... Why don't, why don't you take I mean, the floor here, Jeremy? At, uh, well, at, the, at risk ahead, of, over, at risk take of it, take oversimplifying, it. hey... Uh-huh. Is uh, hey. hay is something that you feed to livestock, whereas yeah, no shit. straw Correct. is used yeah. to make hats. <laughs> Are these a? F- is, this doesn't sound like the 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 um. This you don't sound like an expert. Okay, I. Th- this is why I was surprised to hear Danny sticking up for straw. I don't want to be talking straw down. Because straw has its uses. As Jeremy points out, it can be made into hats. Also, uh, bedding I would, or I insulation would... for a barn. It's, are, it's true. However, hay... Scarecrows. Don't hay forget scarecrows. Hay is, Again. has far better nutritional content. Um, I just I just see hay as far, far superior, I far more useful you... than straw. I don't think the question was like what, like which one would a horse pick. <laughs> right, what, you know, I, which one I, has the most I uses, think, or what those uses are? Our, like what it literally is the difference? Do we wait? Do we not that. judge everything in our lives on the basis of what a horse would prefer? <laughs> what a horse would like, do? That's how well, I make every you know, decision. You in can't. <laughs> but that is not the topic. You then. can't be too. I mean, you, you, you know, you, you can't oversimplify it too much because you can feed straw to livestock. It it's not a complete diet well, because I mean, there's you no could, protein you could, in it. It's stuff. all kind of roughish. Listen, but as it doesn't you could, matter whether you could, horses like one or the other better. It doesn't matter what, what, which you can make a hat out of. That's not the the topic. Is what is the difference? You could well, feed I mean, it is a tin can to a goat. That doesn't mean it's a good thing to do. The difference is, I mean, yeah. So hay is any number of of grasses, notably alfalfa. Right. That are grown for the purpose of grown and harvested for the purpose of feeding livestock, whereas straw Correct. is the dried stalks of again any number of grain crops that are. But the, in this in this case, it's the byproduct of like if you harvest a bunch of wheat, you take off the yep. like seed parts at the top, and then you have these stalks left. And when those are dry, those become straw. That is um, correct. 
I would I would say that most times in 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 like unless you're like a fucking farmer or something, most times that yeah. you refer to hay, you're actually talking about straw. Probably correct. Hey, oh, let me raise oh. if you don't mind, Jeremy. Wait, so I've been talking about straw all these years. Could I raise a Could I raise an issue? Um, like if you is, see like if you go to like the grocery store in the fall and they have like a festive fall harvest display with some pumpkins and you'd say oh look at those cute pumpkins on those bales of hay wrong can I and the pumpkin is actually strong can I pumpkin. can I can I raise this has just occurred to me and this seems important the bales of material used in hay rides are almost certainly actually straw are they not. You know that's a really good point, and I didn't think about Thank it. Thank you. But yeah, Thank you. because because hay. A, if you want to buy a, buy a bale of hay, and I it's, learned it's this more well recently, you did. You probably read the same article I did. Almost certainly, it's like three <laughs> times more expensive. Yeah, yeah, is what that person said. Yeah, so <laughs> no way you're going to use hay on your hay ride. Hay ride. Yeah, this, gonna, those bales a, you sit on on hay rides. That is that is some dry ass shit. That's not hay. Would you go on a straw ride? Well, if you go on Fuck a no. so called hay ride, that's what you're doing. You're going on a straw ride. Yes, I. That Man. is my point, Chris. <laughs> oh, I From see. From a marketing standpoint, hey, so come we've on been my straw ride. Scammed all these years. Yeah. What yeah. about what about now? This is important, guys. The. Okay, everybody listen. (laughs) Okay, I'm listening now. Supposing you enter your scarecrow into the scarecrow contest at Dunn Cider Mill. Right. Which which I plan to do every year, but I never do. (laughs) Do you use straw or hay to make a scarecrow? Straw. Yeah. Yeah, I would use straw. Unless you were... I I assume they have some kind of rules about that in the guidebook. (laughs) Otherwise, you could just put like an actual that, monster. That I mean, really the, th- the <laughs> thing you have to think you could scare the crows a lot more efficiently. <laughs> put I some overalls on I, a, on him. We yeah. should. We should also. I think you may have some misconceptions about the criteria on which the scarecrows <laughs> at the Dunn's Cider Mill Scarecrow <laughs> Contest are judged. It's just how many crows I don't know. you can I don't, scare, I don't, right? I don't have an yeah right. This is it's literally judged on. <laughs> they they send a bunch of crows in there, and however many run, fly fly shitless out of the. They're no, like that's in a not circle. that's not how they do it now. What they do, they just have one crow, but he's hooked up to like an uh, MRI scanner, so they can right, measure right, right. like precisely how scared oh, he no, is. Oh no, those those fMRI things are bull crap. No, no, that's. I don't know. I don't have an yeah, opinion. The crow either. brain is is. Um, Un- unmapped. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I think that was just it was just intended as a clarification. I wanted to, you know, and I think that when you hear it laid out for you, the difference between hay and straw, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. But I think a lot of times, you know, you may not have really considered it. So now you know. So we don't need to, well, to choose which one is better. I, it's not an issue of which one you 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 need to be able to choose which but one hay, is better for a given purpose. Hay is better. Yeah, hay is. I better. mean, hay is better. Yeah. Well, you could but normal, but the problem is it's usually straw when you think it's hay. Yeah. I don't. It's not even. That's exactly. I don't. Right. I I would not even go so far as to say that that is a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> but, but <laughs> for most of us, that's really not even a problem, and I think that's why this kind of why we've so easily been able to just conflate the two because they kind of look the same you know of all They're the both ills hey plaguing our society is today easier word is an easier word than straw and straw also means like something you drink out of well it seems like willful ambiguation on the part of you know some of these the hayride supposed farmers, hayride companies you know do you think that yeah. it's a d- I mean, d- deliberate deception <laughs> Well, I th- well, of course it is. I mean, I mean, they they know what they're putting on. It those, it kind of makes me want to go on a hayride just so I can raise hell about it when it turns out there's only straw on the truck. Like, just start Excuse screaming me. and demanding my money Excuse back. Excuse me up there. Look and at it- this. This is just fucking straw. Where's the goddamn <laughs> me, hay? Big guy. 
Hey, big guy, John, turn that tractor off. <laughs> John, I'd like to. I'd like to go back to your willful. You kids are being ambiguation. scammed. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Willful. Yeah, you were, would, huh? Were you saying that uh, farmers were intentionally trying to draw a distinction between <laughs> hay and straw, where really none exists? Or were you saying, saying no, 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 the opposite. I'm saying, like, there is a distinction, and farmers oh, are aware of it. Oh, okay. But it happens to be something that is relatively easy to confuse, and I think some of these asshole farmers, again, are taking advantage of that fact. <laughs> did, did Dad <laughs> tell like, you that? <laughs> they're like, I mean, it's really outside the context of a hayride. It's hard. It's... <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty clear to me. It's, I mean, it's not I guess, like they I don't make see, a lot of money out of this. Hay I could yeah. see, like, I could see it's if you were... It's their main source of demand. income for some of these If people. you worked for a grocery store and you were in charge of setting up their dumb fall display with the bales of straw and the scarecrow, and, yeah. like, you were tasked with, like, go out and buy, like, some bales of hay. Like, I could see an unscrupulous farmer, like, you could be like, I, I want a store display, I need, like, ten bales of hay. And I could see an unscrupulous farmer saying, like, oh, you want 10 bales of hay? They know you actually want straw. Oh, but they charge you. But they're going to charge you for the hay. Am I right? Oh, they might. That's a really bad example, Jeremy, because, you know, a lot of those grocery store displays, (laughs) I've noticed, like, like, for instance, during Super Bowl season, a lot of the footballs are actually, like, balloons. (laughs) What? You can't. What? That's exactly what I'm saying. See, because they send out some, you know, but did they, they, they pay for a football, though? <laughs> so you think this guy, the, the, their buying agent is being had? Oh, it's a good price for a gigantic football. <laughs> on the, see, on the other hand, it may be that straw is actually better for a lot of purposes that we think we need hay for, such as the grocery store display. Well, like, what if, what, what if... You know, what if some farmer was like, okay, you want hay, here's a bunch of hay, and then, like, the hay, you know, didn't work very well in the display. An example of that, I I don't know in the grocery store context if that would be a problem, (laughs) 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 but uh, in, in like, for instance, you do use straw as, like, a kind of, for, like, as, like, mulch or, like, a bedding, you know, if you have a garden, and right, right, and hay would hay might not work. Well, the that, reason you, you know? would use straw that, is that, because that wouldn't work. If it well. is really it straw, wouldn't... if it's straw, then the seeds have already been harvested, and you just have the stalks. And if you used hay in place of straw as a bedding, then it might be counterproductive because the seeds would sprout. I'm sorry, I thought we were talking about this. You guys are sighing like you're not interested in hay and straw. I was See, just at adjusting that point, my at that point, not... You have weeds. Don't yeah. you wait. You're so defensive. You're so quick on the draw with defense. I'm not. <laughs> meant nothing by it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. It's getting a little it's defensive right. there. So are we about done here? <laughs> I think. I think. Uh, uh, yeah. I think we're about. Topic done. two. <laughs> <laughs> Topic two. <laughs> Who's gonna play us out? Are we gonna? Part two. <laughs> the play Fallen Leaves. Part four. By my Everything fucking sucks. <laughs> the autumn leaves of red and gold. I see your lips. The summer kisses. The sunburn. to hold Since you went away the days grow longer And soon I'll hear old winter song But I miss you my darling so, uh, when Adam lives, I took my cat to the vet, <laughs> and at the vet, they have like a, 
in the waiting room, they have this poster, this instructional poster. As far as I can tell, the purpose is to like help you determine whether or not your cat is fat. <laughs> and they've got like a... <laughs> but they just have like a picture. And they have like a top view and a side view of like a regular cat that's not fat. <laughs> and then like a cat that's like a little bit, a little getting a little chubby. And then they've got like a third cat that's like insanely fat. <laughs> And it's like, you can just imagine, like, someone, like, oh, like, someone went in there and they're just, like, they have a cat that's, like, ball-shaped. And they didn't realize it's fat this day until they saw this poster. <laughs> I can barely hear, hear it. Uh, mainly because of the incessant, uh, it's like, no, like, I, uh, uh, siren noise and, and like, also talking. Since you went shaped. away, the day is really cute too. Okay. The top view in particular, because the cat just like, it just like goes, goes <laughs> and It's hard to it's hear. Like a, like a jug shit. But I miss <laughs> you, my Because of the sign of it. But whatever that noise is, it's like some kind of detect, like metal detector that's like someone's gonna see that poster and be like, oh shit, my cat is like really fat, I had no idea. Like, oh my god, you must be, I think, I think it's funny, like the vet, amazingly <laughs> incredible the metal. The vet has this, is like under the impression that like, this is the like, that like people give a shit and I think the, the truth is the like, people are like, mind. yeah my cat's fat, it's okay, cute e that way, I don't give a shit. You don't need a poster to, like, explain it. That's what I remember. Oh. Those fucking autumn leaves.